Hello and welcome to Art with Emily and on to our subject of the day which is visual memory. So who can remember what visual memory is? Kind of ironic. Visual memory is where we are trying to remember an image in our minds. So we're trying to retain that image, visualize it after it's gone away and then draw it. So it's like trying to remember lots of words, but this time it's an image. So all we need today is a pen and a piece of paper. We don't want a pencil, but if you have a pencil, don't worry, that's fine. It's just, we wanna try and make sure that if we make a mistake, we don't mind, we ignore it and we move on. So it's confident brush slash pen marks rather than um, rubbing out a lot. Um, so we have a bit of variety in the week. So try and stick to pen and paper, don't draw on your iPad, don't draw on your tablet, let's do this together. And we're gonna start by me describing what should now appear on your screen. So the image today is a very wonky, house. A very tall house. You can see it goes all the way up and we have lots of bends. So it has two bumps. So it goes down, it bumps to one side, it goes in, then it bumps again and then it goes in and then it's on its way to its third lump as it meets the bottom of the page. So we're all slightly bent to bump, bump, and then page, bottom of the page ends. So that's how it bends up the page. And then we get to a really pointy, almost like a big triangle at the top of the house. So it's a really tall house. It's gonna come all the way up um, to the top of your page with a really pointy roof on top. And the roof is covered in tiles. So if you look really closely at the tiles, you can see that where, if you have a row of tiles, the row below it, the tile will start in the middle of the tile above it. If that makes sense. So if you have a think. So if we have, I have a scrap piece of, well, I'll just draw it on here. So if we have a tile like this, below it, the tile will start in the middle yeah? A bit like scales. I'm just gonna cross that out so I know it's not part of my picture. So we have rows of tiles, and if you can, try and do the right number of rows, but it's gonna be quite tricky. So the number of rows are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have seven rows. Oh, counting the one, the one right at the top. Eight is actually with the one right at the top. So one right at the top and then seven rows. So we'll kind of pretend that the top one isn't counted in our row counting skills. So we now need to look at the body of our one, two bumpy house. And we have three circles. So at the top, on the left hand side, we have one circle. In the middle, the circles on the right hand side and at the bottom there's a circle a bit central but it's actually on the left hand side of what is the building it's just the building's a bit wonky so it bounces one side to the other so we have three one side on the left right then left and then we have a very big door it has lines on the door to show the wood panels and it has a little dot to show where the handle is. So we have a wonky house with two bumps. We have a really tall pointy roof, which has one tile at the top and then seven layers of tiles. And the tiles all join in the middle of the tile above it. We have three windows that go top left, then right, then left. And those have bendy spiral lines going all the way around them. And we have a door at the bottom, which has panels, wooden panels and a dot for the entranceway. 
We then have some like swirling lines around the circles. So we swirl around the top and then we swirl around the bottom. So let's just generally try and get those swirling lines in. So one around the top, one around the bottom, and then one or two others. But I think those are, those are a little bit more decorative. So let's get the top and the bottom one and then we'll be good. And then we have a little circle pattern that's done by like weaving in and out. And it runs around the top of the window at the top. So it goes right around the top window and it goes to the left and then it goes through the bottom window. So it misses out the middle window. So if you try and visualize that, at the top, it goes around the right of the top left window. It then goes into the middle of the lower window and it you don't see it. Then it pops out the other side and goes all the way down the right hand side of the door. So top left down then pops out of the lower one and then down by the door. And then we have two strips around the edge of the building, which just have little lines all the way up and down them. And very finally, we have lollipops in our garden. So we have, at the ground, we have a big lollipop on the left. So if on this side, we have a left, and we have a smaller one. And we've been, it's quite nice because on the other side we have the same. So we have big, small, on the other side we have big, small. So on both sides we've got a big lollipop and then a smaller lollipop. So let's just recap that all so it's really embedded in your mind. So stare at the image whilst I describe it to you. So we have a bendy building. We have two lumps. We bend once and every, every time we're bending to the right. So we, we go right, we come back in. We go right out again and we come back in. And then we're heading out right and that's the bottom of the page. We have a roof which is really pointy, like a big triangle. We have one tile at the top and then seven rows of tiles underneath. And we've talked about how the tiles connect. We have three windows, one on the top left, one on the right, and then one on the left before we get to the door. The windows have bendy lines around it. The door has lines straight up and down and these lines are showing the wooden panels of the door. And there's a dot to show where the handle is. We have swirly lines around the windows. So one above each window and then one below the window. We then have a weaving, almost little circles connected to each other. The circles go around the top right of the left. So the top left window, they go around the right of it. They fall down to the lower window and then they pop out right of that window, go down by the door. We then have two strips of lines going around the outside of the building so all the way up to the top to meet the roof. And then in the garden, we have a big lollipop and a smaller one on the left hand side. We're the same on the right. We have a big lollipop and a smaller one. So the lollipops are basically a really big swirl. So there's a lot of details this week and I do not expect you to get every single one of them. Just try your, you try your best and see what you come out with. It might even be more beautiful than the original. Who knows? But we're going to stare at the image for another three seconds. Three, two, one. Let's start drawing. So. If you're keen on doing this without any prompts from me, I would mute the video now. I'm going to do a few prompts as we go through, like normal. We're going to start near the top. So remember, this is going to cover your whole page. So you need to leave room for your roof, but start quite near the top and in the center. So think of the bendiness of the building.
How many bends are there? What shape is the roof? Now, the tiles, how are they arranged? Okay. How many rows do we have? So we talked about the number of rows quite a lot. So how many do we have? And how do the tiles relate to each other? Can I even get the tiles right? I don't know. I'm counting mine. Remember, we, we didn't count the top one tile when we were doing our count. So it could be important to remember that. Mine's looking a little bit like scales. You know what? I think I might have done mine too small. small so maybe this is a problem you found as well but I'm just gonna add a row so we this is a hint we had seven we had a one tile at the top and then we had seven rows below it so mine looks a little bit wonky so maybe yours does too let's see we'll see at the end hopefully now we need to do the windows so we had how many windows and what was their shape? Really think about, if you try and visualize it in your mind, what was their shape? What did they look like? How great were the windows? Or did you not like them perhaps? Um, think about what they looked like. So there was a pattern inside the windows, so what was that like? Did it remind you of something? To me, it reminded me almost like in a cartoon where you have someone looking like they're going crazy and they're hypnotized. That's what it reminds me of. And then where were the lines around the windows? We talked about having lines around the windows. If you want to add in a couple more lines, be my guest, it's your picture. So, now we've done that, where, what, what was, there was a pattern of lines, I can't quite describe it without giving it away entirely, and it went all the way from the top window. And where did it go, and what did it look like? And did it miss out a section of the picture? Or did it go around everywhere? It's quite a tricky one, this bit. It requires a lot of concentration. So for those of you struggling, it was almost like lots of interlocking circles, wasn't it? So almost lots of little circles like this all the way down. And if you got it, congratulations. That was a hard one to draw. So we have our lines, our swirly lines. We've got our connection from the top down to the bottom. Now onto the door. What was the shape of the door and what decoration did the door have on it? 
that one was quite a simple one in comparison to the rest of the image. So try and visualize it. What was it? What did it look like? And was there a door handle? Brilliant. So now think of the decoration around the outside. Not the garden yet, more like the decoration around the edge of the house. Perhaps what do you think it's there for? Do you think it's a decoration or do you think it's used for something? Because again, it reminds me of something. And who's living in this quirky house, this really cool and strange living? It's got to be for someone special. So we've done the curvy building, we've done the roof, we've got the windows, we have the door, we have the patterns around the windows, and we have the patterns around the edge of the house. So the only thing left is the surroundings around the house. And there were four things in those surroundings, so try and remember what those four things were. Were they the same each side or were they different? What did they look like? And have I missed anything out? That is the big question. So, if you haven't quite done, Pause the video because I'm about to show you what my one looks like. I would love to see what yours looks like. So mine looks like this. So we have a bendy building, one, two, and then as it's going towards the third bend, it cuts off. We have a pointy roof, way too many tiles I've got. I added a row in at the bottom because I didn't size them quite right. So. Hopefully you sized yours right. We had one tile at the top and then seven rows. I've got eight. We then have one, two, three windows and they spiral around the bendy lines, almost like those crazed or hypnotized people in a film, in a cartoon. Around the windows, we had a line at the bottom and a line at the top. And I joined mine up to the door. We have this lovely weaving or small interlocking circles pattern that popped out the right of the top one, came round, and then went through this lower one and went down the right hand side of the door. The door had wooden panels on it. We had these lovely decoration around the outside and these remind me of ladders, almost like they're there for someone to scurry all the way up to the top. And these are my lollipops in the garden, a bigger one, a smaller one, and the same on each side, a bigger one and a smaller one. So hopefully yours looks like something like this, but if you've created your own version, that would be great to see. An added step is you could paint it, so or you could color it in, anything would work, any medium, coloring pencils, felt tips, watercolor, acrylic, anything you have at home, just to bring a bit of life to it. And I'd love to see maybe what you think the creature is hiding inside. So if you want to share anything with me, my contact details are in the description. And if you hashtag ArtKOnline when you're sharing on social media, I'll get to see it and it will be fantastic or brighten my day. Um, and for more videos, obviously, please like and subscribe and then we can do some more creating together. But for now, that's it. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.